Hi and welcome to part 9 of this video series. Today we're going to add some new fields to the teams, add breadcrumbs and also a few other small things. And then I'm going to make it possible to set the invoice to paid. And the most important thing for this part is to work on the invoice detail page. But first we can begin with adding new fields to the teams and invoice. Okay, so if I go into apps and then team and models pipe at the bottom here I paste a few new fields. I have one for the email which is email field, address 1, address 2, zip code and place. If you want more fields you can add these as well. And then I stop the web server as a python manage.py make migrations and python manage.py migrate. So now the database is updated and we can run the server again. Next step is to add these new fields to the serializer so we can access it in the front end. So here we say email address 1, address 2, zip code and place. Then we can save this. So now we should be able to access these in the front end. So I can go back here now and set this to done and this to done. And then before I continue, I just want to go into the template for this, for the PDF. So if I go into invoice, templates, PDF, I just want to fix this before I forget it. So team.name here, I can say team.address. And then I want to check if we have the zip code or the place. So if team.zip code or team.place, then we can show this as well. And if, and just replace this with team.zip code and team.place and save. And that's it. Now we can actually update this as well. So team.email and save. So now we've updated the PDF template as well. And since we now have the possibility to show it here, I want to change the edit team.view so we can change this information in the front end. So go into source views dashboard edit team.view. Can make this a little bit smaller. Then I can make a copy of bank account, email, I want the type to be email, and the model should be team.email. And I want one field for the address, address, sorry, address one, no, address two and one for the zip code and one for the place. So zip code, zip code, place and place. So now we can change this in the front end. So if I just save now, go to the website, my account. Okay, so if I now go to edit team, I now have a few new fields here. So I can add code with stein at gmail.com, address, zip code and place. If I now save and go into edit team again, you'll see that I've stored this information in the back end. Perfect. So then I can go back to the to-do list, I set this to done and this to done. And then the next step is to add breadcrumbs. So I want to make it possible to have links up here so I can go back to my account and dashboard and same for all of these different pages. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to my Patreons. So we can begin with the clients page. So if I just find clients.view and at the top here over the columns, add a couple of lines, is a nav class breadcrumb, area label breadcrumbs. Inside here I have a UL, which is an ordered list, ally, and then a router link to the dashboard. And then one more, which is is active because this is the client's page. And this is just a link to the same page we are on. 
And when we set this to current, the bull mode will add some styling to it. So if I save now, go back, you'll see that I now have breadcrumbs here. And if I click here, I'll be sent to the dashboard. Great. So then I can fix the same thing for add client. So if I just go to add client, like that. Save, so it's the same here, it's just that I have one more link. So now I can go back there, so it's a little bit easier to navigate. And then the client, which is a little bit different, because here we need to uh, use the, the bind this to the value and ID of the client. So if I just find client.view at the top, paste again. And as you can see, the only difference here is that I use the colon to bind the value here to this route name and then I pass in client.id, which I have access to down here. So, and also show the client name there. So if I save now, go back, you'll see that I have this here and I shows the name of the client I'm on. Perfect. And we can do the same for edit client. Save, so it's just the same code, it's just I added one more here, which is edit client and pass in. So this is the same link as you can find here for going to the edit client page. So if I just go into one, edit, you'll see here that I can go to all of these different pages. And this will need to be done with all the other pages as well. So the next one is invoices, and then the add invoice. And the invoice page. The my account. And then last but not least, edit client. No edit team, of course. So now we should have breadcrumbs all over the application. And I can set this task to done. Next step now is to work on the invoice detail page. So on this page, I want to make a few changes. I want to have a summary and also I need to change this table a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is to fix a little bit in the back end. So if I scroll down and find invoice slash models.py and I want to create a new function for the, uh, for the invoice model because I want to get the due date in a formatted version so I can use it in the front end a little bit easier. So it's just self.getDueDate, which is this function, and then we add it to st string time. And I want the day, month, and year. So it's probably a different format than in your country. And then inside the serializer.py, if I scroll down here, and at the bottom, I add one more, get due date formatted, which is this function we just created. And then if I go into invoice.view, I want to remove this. So I need to clean up this page a little bit. And then in the client box, I want to add some space above it, like that. No, below, sorry. So between these two, I add some space. And I also want to add a class of box, so we get a little bit shadow around this, so it's easier to separate. Also, these two classes can be added here, like that. And these two H3 titles, I want to add MB4, no, MB5, so we get space below them and down to the content. So now we get space in there, perfect. And then I want to copy one of these two boxes and customize it a little bit so we can show the summary just like this. So here we have a div class column is 12. Inside there we have a new div class box and a simple title summary. And here we show the net amount, VAT amount, gross amount and the bank account number we want the payment to go to. And then we show the, our referent, reference, the client reference the due date, which is the function we created in the model. And then we show the status and the invoice type. I will create these functions first before we can test this. So if I just scroll down to methods, and then below the get PDF, 
First, we can create a get status label. This just checks if the invoice is paid, then it says return is paid. If not, it said it's not paid. And we want a similar function for checking if it is a credit note or a regular invoice. So if I now save, go back here, receive the summary and its invoice type and the status is not paid. We haven't added anything to the bank account and not the references either. So I can go to the back end and just fix this so we have a little bit of information there. Like that. And we can also add sender ref, client contact ref, just so we have something a little bit of information there. So if I now refresh, you'll see more information in this summary. Perfect. As you can see here, these are not aligned, so I want to fix that. So if I just go up here, just copy this and remove the box class from there, which I just added and indent this, close the div and the same here, remove the box class, add the div class box, indent and close the div and save. So if I now go back here, you will see that this looks much better. Perfect. And then I want to change this a little bit. So in here, if I find a table, I want to have a few more fields here. I want the title, the quantity, the VOT rate and total. And since this is inside the T head, this needs to be TH. And I need to customize this. So just remove these three and add these four instead. So item title, quantity, item VOT rate and get item total and pass in item, which we'll create now. So just copy this, scroll down, and at the bottom here, we can create this method. So first I get the unit price from the item, the quantity, and then I calculate the total, and then I just parse it as float, just to make sure that it's correct, and set two fixed to two, because we just want two decimals, save, go back and now this looks better perfect so now the invoice detail page looks much better and i can go back here to the to-do list and set this task to done oops done next is fix the is labeled in the invoice as list so if i go back to here i want to say is paid or is not page or no so here I want to say yes or no instead of true or false. So open up invoices.view and instead of showing this, we can say get status label and pass in invoice. Then we can create this method in the view part down here. And now just say if invoice.is paid, we said yes. And if it's not paid, we said no. Perfect, so that makes a little bit more sense than true or false. So let's set this task to done. Next, I want to add due date to the invoices list. So I want to show the due date out here so it's easier to keep track of the due date. So if I go back to invoices.view and find the table, can add it, add, add it after amount. And then I just call the same get due date formatted as we did in the invoice.view page. So now it's a little bit easier to see when the due when the invoice is due. Great. So then I can set this task to done as well. And then I also make it possible to set an invoice as paid. So then we need to go back to invoice to the view again and scroll up to the to the download button and add a new div class buttons so we get a little bit space because I want to add one more button here. After here I say button at click then we call set as paid. I want this to be green so it makes sense to click it when everything is okay and I just want to show this if invoice.paid is not true. So let's go down and create this function. 
First, I just want to import the toast so we can show a toast when we have set the invoice to paid. Now we can scroll to the bottom of the methods. I want this to be an async function. So the first thing I do is to set this dot invoice dot is paid to true. This is just the invoice we have local here on view, and then I get all of the items and add it to a new list item, and then I delete all of the items from the invoice. And when that is done, I call await.axios and patch. So I just send the information about this invoice back to the server. And when that is done, I call this toast so we can show that the changes were saved. And if there are any errors, I just print them in the console. So the reason why I call the delete function up here to remove the items is because the backend isn't ready to handle items for the update because the items are read only. And when that's finished, I can set this.invoice.items back to this variable. So then everything should be okay. So if I just go into one of these now, I can click set as paid. The changes were saved. Perfect. And if I scroll down, it's changed to status is paid. Same is that if I go out here to the list, this will say is paid. Perfect. So then I can go here again as I this to done. And that was it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please click like below. In the next part of this series, we'll make it possible to create credit notes and also some other cool things. So see you in the next video.